Brasil. Time. As the head trainer for Otavio Café, last year I was responsible for training more than 80 baristas. In doing so, I was able to see up close the joys and the struggles of those who are just starting out in this amazing industry, as well as some of their behavior patterns. And that's what I want to share with you today while we drink this excellent coffee. The three biggest fears of the barista. Fear number one, dial in espresso. Oh, what a tiny little with of liquid. It's a different ratio every single day, sometimes more. Three, six, ten ratios a day. How can one sleep after so many shots? One small mistake and we can compromise the work of the whole chain. Today, this cough asked me to use 20 grams in and 40 grams out. And it also asked me to tell you to look for flavor and aroma of raspberry jam, brown sugar, dry cranberries, medium weight body, the texture and the therapy and long lasting finish. All the information I've given you is over here in the blackboard just for your reference. I'll be back in a bit. Before I continue, let me introduce you to this coffee. This coffee is a natural yellow bourbon hand-picked at Cerrado region, Brazil. It was produced by Eduardo Pinheiro Campos at Dona Neném Farm. The best thing about these espressos is that everyone that tasted it finished it so quickly. And that's because of the mineralization of this bean, which comes from the terroir and gives it that wanting more sensation. But today, I'll need to ask you a little bit of patience. So please, stir your espresso 10 times and take just the first sip. Then, wait for further instructions, okay? Just the first sip and wait. Now, yes, please, be delighted by the red grape flavor that pops up at the second sip. Enjoy. Fear number two, simming milk. A good milk for simmon should have the right amount of carbohydrates for sweetness, proteins for expansion, and fats for flavor and stability of the foam. In practice, this theory can be a little bit more complicated than that. For example, who here have never made or heard a symphony coming from a milk simmon in a pitcher, or has collected a bunch of blocks that never quite turns into hearts? I've made plenty. But beyond the vegetable latte art times, the texture and the balance with espressos could be one of the biggest challenges for a barista. 
To overcome this challenge, I set out to find the perfect milk for Simon and I came across the freeze distillation technique that I learned from Ben Foot. How does it work? We freeze a bottle of milk and let it defrost in a container. Then we throw out the ice once, it, once it's like this, translucent. The result is a fortified milk with an amazing texture, flavor and sweetness. And the best part, it's easier for steaming. What do we know about chemically? We're decreasing the amount of water of this milk. Chemically, we are breaking down some of the hydrogen atoms. And doing this, the milk would drive any engineer crazy. Exactly like what happened not too long ago with the agronomists when seeing a coffee fermenting. In these cups, I'm going to unify these two broken sigma as this coffee was refined by Navit. These cherries were picked and immediately sealed in tanks with no oxygen where they fermented in their own yeast and bacteria for 40 hours in maximum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. What does this carbonic maceration process enhance in this coffee? These clean fruity flavors that you found in your espressos and this long lasting sweetness that you're still feeling in your tongues. Together with this milk, new flavors pops up. So please take notes of your milk beverage flavors. Prune, raisins, and malted chocolate. The texture is going to be super creamy. And there's another little secret. To get into this flavor balance, I decided to recover the flavors that you found in the second sip of your espressos. And for this, I made these extractions in frozen cups. Enjoy. Don't forget fruit, and raisins, and malted chocolate.
remember how we started this conversation about the joys and the struggles of new baristas. So, when I think about my own biggest fear, there are actually two instances that come to my mind. I can't decide which was worse. My first cup of table, when I do all that cups into that evaluation form, I have no idea how to fill it. Or a bit later, third cup in table, when I was able to understand it. But the, light, the flavor notes was still almost empty. And that's our fear number three, sensory. Because I realized that this doesn't just happen only with me. It can be very hard for a new barista or for the end customer to clearly taste the notes that come listed in a coffee label. But the cleaner the coffee, the more joyous the experience of tasting and learning can be. And that's why I choose this coffee because of its clarity and consistency that we achieve by the drying process that I will explain to you in a bit. This coffee was dried in African beds for 23 days. Nothing new, right? So what's the secret then? The secret is the gradual decrease of humidity inside the bean that we achieve by a constant control of temperature and humidity in the 18 hours per day this coffee dried, protected from sunlight, and in the six hours that it dried exposed. The result we already saw during the roast, this coffee showed us a very uniform crack in dehydration and we confirmed it in the cups with espresso tasting like raspberry jam, milk beverage tasting like prune and malted chocolate and now in the signature beverage flavors that revisit the two courses that you had but brings back some flavor attributes that I found only in the cupping table as Porto wine. So please take notes of our sick bath flavors. Raspberry jam, prune, dark chocolate, and Porto wine. As the milk beverage, velvety as the espresso, but fortified by the Porto wine. Let's go. So. The magic of this tiny little evil liquid is that plus two is not always four. For example, to bring the of the dessert wine, the porto wine, I'm filtering my espressos for two grams of almonds. To highlight the raspberry jam flavor, I'm using dried cherries. To bring the prune flavor, using freeze distilled milk. And to transform the malty chocolate flavor into dark chocolate, I'm using mascarpone. All these three ingredients are in a 40 grams reduction that I made by using equal parts of each for 30 minutes in the heating. And I processed, filtered, and chilled it. And the texture comes with a nitrogen capsule. Almost done and I couldn't be happier because it came here and they talked about an issue that I th doesn't usually hear about I talked about the lives of hundreds of new baristas I hope that I have shown you that by training and passion we can deal with all this struggle way and even make into the world it's my first time here and it feels like it's my first time behind the bar all over again these fears never completely disappear. But now, the same thing I say to my students, I must say to myself, if it scares you, face it. Because I have no doubt in love and fear. I love it. I think 
Thank you very much.